Anybody else? I have another question. Fire away, Corey. So one of my friends, powerlifter, um, hard shift, right knee pain, hard shift to the right when he squats. Mm -hmm. So he cleared a lot of the stuff, but under under a lot of load, obviously, still gets that shift. Uh -huh. This is kind of, I guess, like Bashian. He talks about like fatigue. So can you use fatigue like at the end of a workout to sort of um, groove the squat pattern in a way? So like at the end of a workout, if he's every time he back squats, he shifts to the right. If we lower the load, but he's already fatigued, his system is kind of thinks it's heavier weight and he doesn't shift. Can we kind of use it as a method? Maybe, yes, to, uh, maybe. I mean, if he's successful, right? Um, and, and, and again, if it's, if it's a purely technical problem, then I think that you, you may have a viable strategy there. Now, if it's related to a certain threshold of force that's required, then maybe not. And now you might have to consider another strategy, okay? So, so let's talk about right shift in a, in a squat. So do you recall talking about that when you were with, with the fine folks at IFAST? I do. Okay. So the, so the right shift is a compensatory strategy, right? That, uh, again, if he cannot manage it at a certain threshold of load, he will continue to, to try to use that, right? So maybe it's a matter of, okay, let's bring the weight back. Let's find out where you are capable of, of squatting wherever we say is ideal. And then we start to reload over time. That would be the simplest way to do it, right? Maybe um, it is a, uh, a positional strategy that, that he uses. Because again, he's not supporting load. So maybe it has nothing to do with the squat itself. And it has to do with his ability to control the position of the axial skeleton, his ability to manage the, the internal pressures inside the axial skeleton, right? So, you know, one of the things that really quick tricks is you put a belt on somebody and then you watch them squat with the belt and you compare it to them squatting without the belt at that threshold level. And a lot of times it changes dramatically. And, and so then you kind of know, it's like, okay, I have this, this inability to control the internal forces as well when I reach a certain load and that's what promotes the, the, the right shift. So um, again, what, what the fix is, is gonna be an unfortunate, it depends thing, but I would just have like, a, a just go through a strategy and say, okay, let's take you to threshold level. It's like, what weight can you squat where we would say that this is an okay looking squat without the compensatory strategy and then start to build. If it comes back right away, then you're gonna to have to look elsewhere, right? So maybe it's the way I position my upper thorax under the load at a certain weight. And so maybe I don't even need to, to worry about the squat right now. Maybe I need to be you know, worried about changing the shape of that upper thorax through you know, the strength training through the pressure management strategies, through reaching activities, through pulling activities. So again, I can't tell you exactly which one that would be without, without, you know, looking this, at this person. But, but again, it's like you can slowly eliminate things if you just pay attention to what you're actually doing at the time. Um, but yeah, the simplest way to go is just like taking back down to below that. Is it pretty? Okay. Let's just add a little bit of weight at a time. You know, there's nothing wrong with the trial and error concept. People want to think that, oh, you have, you have, if this happens, then this is the strategy that you'll use. And it's like, it's, unfortunately, we're just not that simple. Well, it's interesting because we did a bunch of like lower level stuff to kind of get the shift to the left. Uh -huh. Like just table test wise, there's a ton of range of motion, like kind of everywhere, like right. lower body. And right. doing too much to get the shift to the left, you would start shifting to the left when he squatted. Uh -huh. So it was kind of like finding that middle ground between right, right. Just finding whatever works so we can squat for the day. Sometimes it's a simple cue. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a position of load. Sometimes it's a position of stance. Sometimes it it's n has nothing to do with the activity in question, right? And, and again, but, but you can eliminate those strategies um, just through simple trial and error and using your, your reasoning right, as to, okay, what is actually happening here? So if I got a guy that 
if you do flop them on a table and you move them around, you go, wow, he moves really, really well. Okay, now he's having trouble managing the internal and external forces, right? So I got gravity, I got external load, and then I got the stuff that's going on inside that I all have to control. Right? It's like a lot of just kind of considering all the factors, not just what yeah. it looks like on the table and what the squat yeah. looked like that one day. Right, and, and, and be simple first, right? Just what's the easiest thing I could possibly do? Like, hey, uh, try this instead of that. There you go. And then you work, you, you try to get more complex from there. Um, but yeah, don't, don't overcomplicate it until you have to. Hey, Bill, if I could kind of add something. Of course. Um, back in the, uh, the days when I was the king of the high threshold strategy, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was working out at your place, and Eric Otter was watching me squat. And of course, I was the, you know, king of the right stance and uh he had me just slightly turn my right foot in just a little bit and then had me focus on driving off my right leg mm -hmm. and that that did it for me so i you know I, yeah. I i i don't know and you know also you helping me you know understand circumferential expansion definitely helped me with that but right. that might be something that he might want to try just to see because i'll have people that come in you know, they want me to work with them one time and fix their squat. And I see a lot of that right shift yep. and I kind of have them, you know, give them a couple different things to do to learn, teach them how to, you know, brace properly. But that driving, like turning that foot in and driving off that right foot really yeah. seems to clean a lot of that up. Right. So, so the, the, the typical right shift is a, a right internal rotation adduction of the hip. So the, the strategy to come out of that would be to uh, avoid that, that motion as you sit down into a squat. So the way you would do that would be to, to externally rotate the hip, right? So the strategy that, that you were given by Eric basically produces that. So if you bring your foot in a little bit and you push off of that foot a little bit, then you tend to um, uh, promote external rotation as you sit down versus allowing the internal rotation to happen. Yeah. So it was a really simple thing that, yeah. uh, that yeah. he was able to help me with. So, yeah. and a lot of times but, it is that simple. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Cool.